Factory suspension is never perfect. I'm a prime example of this and you'll see exactly why later on. So you have to set this up for you and your riding style. Now there are hundreds upon hundreds of forum threads and videos beating this topic to absolute death. So here's mine. I'll justify it by saying it's not as beaten to death with this specific bike. There's only a handful of videos out there for the 450 RL and I don't feel like they give the front forks enough justice, which we certainly will in this video. First, some basic concepts. Your suspension has some adjustments that will affect the handling. Compression up top and rebound down below. Compression determines how quickly or slowly your suspension compresses when it's hit, and then rebound determines how quickly or slowly it reverts back to its normal state. And that can all be easily adjusted with a screwdriver. Personally, I haven't really touched these. All I've really done is just harden the compression and rebound just a couple of clicks for my Supermoto setup. But there's a bigger adjustment which should be done that I haven't yet, and that's rider sag. Rider sag will help you to determine your spring rate and your preload, and it probably should be done before you go clicking away at everything. Excuse me one second. Determining sag is a pretty basic concept. You're just measuring two distances and then determining the difference between the two. You can do it with a buddy and some measuring tape, or you can use a specialty tool like this. This is from Tusk, and this is a specific sag setting tool. On one end, it has a cone right here that you can fit into your axle. And then rather than just a regular ruler, this one actually has a zero set. So you don't have to write down two numbers. You just have to measure it and then it shows the number, which is gonna work really nicely for me specifically. And you'll see why in a little bit. So if we know how to measure sag, the big question is what do we measure it to? There's lots of resources online and lots of opinions about this. So there will be a number of different answers and everyone has a different setup and they believe that theirs is the best and yada, yada, yada yada so what i'm going to be doing is referring to race tech's motorcycle suspension bible and i'm going to be referring to this throughout the entire episode and everything to do with this suspension because i want it to come from one source and i'm pretty sure race tech knows what they're talking about this bible is everything you wanted to know about suspension and even more of what you didn't this thing is detailed with way more than you would ever want to see like ever and in it is measuring sag the race tech way, which is exactly what we're gonna be doing. But there's a problem. This method requires three people, a rider to sit on the bike, another to keep it balanced, and a third to measure the stiction. But I'm a one-man wolf pack, what am I to do? Well, first I weighed myself, gear and all, even my backpack. Then I found my body double in the form of bags full of weights. So now we have the bike fully weighted independently so we can determine what Race Tech calls its static sag. Static sag is from fully extended all the way to weighted on the ground with a rider. But you might be asking yourself, shouldn't you actually have a rider on there to determine the riding position or even an attack position? Don't you want it to simulate exactly how you ride the bike? And to that I say, that's exactly what I did. So right now I have everything weighted and I have it on the center stand with the tusks measurement tool on the rear with it set to zero what i'll do next is drop the bike from the center stand so the rear is compressed with the rider weight applied then i'll push down on it let it settle take a measurement then pull up let it settle take another measurement these two show the outer limits of the stiction zone and the difference is our static sag i'll also do the same to the front measuring where the pot of gold lies at the end of the rainbow so as you can see now, our incredibly accurate body double is no more. We don't need it because we have determined our static sag. As you saw in those clips, it was actually a little bit less than what I was expecting. It was about 94 millimeters or so, but the target, the goal is 106. So I had to make some adjustments with the body weight still on there, of course, and actually change the preload with the shock, basically loosen the nut on the top so that it can have much more range. And then I rechecked a couple of times and now I'm at that goal of 106 millimeters. Now, with the weight off of the bike, we're gonna check the free sag. The free sag is basically the exact same thing, except no rider this time. It's just gonna be the weight of the bike. And we'll see whether or not the springs that we have are the right ones. Now that we've done the checks, noted the numbers, what's next? I have to determine whether or not the suspension setup that I currently have is right for me. So here's my numbers. Next, I would compare this to some of the recommended settings, particularly the preload and see if my spring rate is good or if I need to change it. If there's too much preload, then that means we need a stiffer spring. Basically, we had to tighten it too much in order to get the recommended static sag. Conversely, if there's too little preload, like if you drop the bike and with the free sag under its own weight, it barely drops, then you need a softer spring. So there's some general recommended settings within the suspension Bible. I wanted to compare that to what I had actually noted on my suspension. And 
nothing's in spec. So I put together this spreadsheet to record my settings as well as compare it to the Suspension Bible recommended settings with a simple yes, no column right here to see whether or not I'm in that specified range. And as you can see, it's pretty red on that side. The only thing really that I'm in spec with are the stiction zones, which of course I would be. This is a fairly new setup. It's only about a year and a half old at this point. The only thing that I can think of that would affect stiction zone is any of the internals like worn valves, worn seals, or bad oil. So far, not up to a great start, but there is another section of race tech that I can look for something a little bit more specific, and that's their spring rate calculator. Here, you can enter your specific bike, get some general information about you and your riding type, and they'll provide recommended spring rates compared to stock. They have many different riding styles listed, which will affect the spring rate. And while my riding is primarily supermoto based, I also want to account for the occasional dual sport ride. So I played with the settings to compare all the riding styles and just like Goldilocks, I found the riding style that's just right, desert. Which is actually perfect because my dual sporting would be open desert because that's the climate that I'm in anyway. And desert is smack dab in the middle between supermoto and dual sport. So on the spreadsheet, I also pulled in the basic setup front and rear for that specific desert riding style, again, to compare to my actual numbers. In fact, that's where that 106 millimeters of static sag came from. I wanted to set that up initially so that way I can determine with that in mind whether or not I had the right spring rates. They didn't have any free sag settings listed but as you can see compared to at least the recommended ones I'm sitting pretty low compared to the 15 to 40 range that they recommend which would indicate stiffer springs however one of the other things that the actual website provided was preload settings and that's seven millimeters so after I got my 106 millimeter sag set up I measured it and then compared it to what Honda says is the unsprung length of the spring and determined that I actually have eight millimeters, which I'll call close enough. In fact, the website on its recommended spring rate calculator said that it recommended 5.35 kilogram per millimeter springs for me and stock is 5.3, so I'm there already. However, it's the front that gives me a little bit more issue. First of all, the website doesn't really provide as much information for the front as it does for the rear. It just provides the oil level capacity that it recommends and the front spring preload, which is five millimeters. But the spring preload on the front forks aren't adjustable externally. You can't twist anything to adjust that. You actually have to pull them out and take it apart in order to determine what your preload is. So there's nothing I can really do with that. But if we look back at the recommended race tech suspension Bible settings, you can at least see that my average here is 38 millimeters and the recommended is 60 to 75, which is way off, almost half of what I should be sagging. This is not sagging enough in the front, it's too stiff which would indicate a softer spring rate for me. And wouldn't you know it, the recommended settings on the website call for 0.43 kilograms per millimeter and the stock is 0.51 kilograms per millimeter. So that's exactly what I bought. So in the next episode, we will be installing these, checking the preload and seeing just what kind of a difference this makes. See you then.